All right, so I'm going to uh, introduce Alana to the best of my ability. I know that she'll be able to introduce herself with some more um, interesting details, but but Alana and her family are, we consider very close friends. We've met, believe it or not, through her daughter who went to school at Binghamton University. So here living in Arizona, probably shopping in the same supermarkets, uh, we really never got to know Alana and her husband, Danny, and their children until my daughter's third birthday party that my mother-in-law came to town. Alana had known my mother-in-law and was at the party, and that's when we got to know her. She's part of our advisory board. Um, also, a huge uh, help all the time whenever we do different things in the kitchen. So thank you for that, of course, and all your other tips and everything. But today, uh, really, that's not why we asked Alana to help. The real reason why we asked today for a presentation is if you do not know about Alana, she has a food blog, is what I call it, Shortcuts to Shabbat. And she has a lot of nice tips and tricks for the kitchen, different recipes and fun items that she loves I guess cooking with her heart, isn't that the Italian word? Um, but Alana is going to share some tips, tricks, and different uh, ways that you can use just what you have in your own home to eat healthy, eat delicious. And it shouldn't be something that you need to be some top line chef, cordon bleu or something that to make your uh, food delicious. So I'm going to turn the mic over to Alana and, and uh, let her continue her introduction and share what she's going to present today. Well, first of all, thank you, Hani and Levy, for giving me this opportunity and to giving us all this opportunity to get together. Um, and welcome to my kitchen. I think some of you up there have been here, but for those of you, it's your first time in my kitchen. Welcome. Hopefully we can do it in person sooner than later. Um, in these challenging uh, days, we want to create a sense of comfort in the kitchen and not the sense of panic that I'm feeling amongst a lot of people. Um, everybody's concerned about what they're going to get, how they're going to get it, what they have on hand. Um, and what my purpose here today is to give you some resources and to teach you to use what we have on hand to limit our exposure in the markets um, and how to um, extend what we have to the next meal. For instance, if you've made a soup, don't toss those vegetables that you had in the soup that are very soggy. You can drain them, chop them up with some matzo meal and eggs and make some, you know, vegetable patties. Or if you're making a lot of beans these days that a lot of people are doing, you can reserve that, a bit of that liquid and add it to your next soup, which will uh, create a thickener in your soup. Leftover chicken or fish or any type of protein that you've prepared, even if you have a few scraps left, just chop it up and add it into a rice with veggies and make a fried rice or tortillas. The sky's the limit and the key is creativity. I don't want people opening up their pantry cabinets every day and saying, oh great, pasta, or oh great, beans. There's a way to layer all our ingredients, your pickled ingredients, your condiments, your, your eggs in your refrigerator, your cheeses. So we really can have diverse meals, but we're not running to the market every day like we used to. Uh, in our home, we like to quote Michael Pollan, the journalist, to say, we like to eat good food, not too much, and mostly plant-based, which we really try to do. Um, and uh, as I said, this session is going to be a resource for us. Uh, and uh, one of the things that I can send to you afterwards is that McClendon's Farm, McClendon Select, you can go on their site. Uh, I go every Wednesday and it's very safe. They are masked and gloved and you order online and they have a prepared box of produce for you. They have different sizes and um, you don't get out of your car. You open up your car and they, they put it into your car. And uh, it's really been a lifesaver for us. And this way, again, we're limiting our exposure walking amongst people out in the market. Another great tip, if you have dear friends like I do, like Nancy Mendelson, we like to call her garden Fancy Nancy's, or I don't know if many of you people have met Cindy Steele. She also um, is a volunteer with Smile and Senior. She has a, I call her garden, Garden of Eden. And so these wonderful friends, I don't know if you could see, Cindy, um, Nancy dropped this at our doorstep and it has her green onion, it has parsley that we're gonna use, um, and cilantro and dill. And foraging in your friend's gardens is an incredible thing to do. 
uh, if you're not fortunate enough to have your own garden. Um, I went foraging yesterday and Cindy Steele always leaves her gate open for me. And I have mint and basil and uh, thyme and chives. And this is a, a great way to brighten any ordinary meal. Uh, and uh, now we're gonna get started with the menu that I prepared for you today. And what I want to tell you is, is that everything will be uh, sent to you if you would like uh, by email. You just let Lady or I know and we will email this all to you. So again, at this time, this challenging time where everybody is very anxiety ridden, um, I have taken a bunch of mint, which we do a lot. If you come to our table, uh, any type of dinner or lunch, you're going to get uh, hot water and mint. And there's no tea bag in here. And um, you just let it simmer in, in any type of pot. You don't have to have a fancy pot like this. But it's just the mint leaves and hot water. And you let it sit and simmer for a couple of minutes. And you pour it. It's delicious. Another suggestion, um, because we are so filled with citrus in Arizona, um, I was told also by Nancy Mendelson, her daughter takes the peel of citrus and lets it simmer in the, uh, the same way in water. So l'chaim. Uh, and this is a delicious, calming tea. And again, you're not running to the store to get a tea bag. So it's a very, I, I drink this all day. It's delicious. Um, next, we're going to go to um, a breakfast, lunch, or dinner item. Uh, I'm encouraging people to get away from the sweet breakfast and start thinking about savory breakfast. So I'm going to show you, this is a tahina that I made. And uh, oh, let me get my jar to show you my favorite cleaner. Let me just go here. Here. This is the brand. And again, I can give you all the information. Um, this is a, a kosher tahina. And um, we mi you mix that with a cup of tahina and a cup of water, uh, a teaspoon or two of salt, and you just stir it up. And I'm going to plate that for you now and show you what I do to layer it. So I know a lot of you are familiar with hummus and tahina is in the hummus. It's a sesame paste. So I'm gonna plate it and then I'm gonna give it a swirl. And this is terrific in the morning with toast. We like to eat it with pita. So there's a fun thing to do where you just take your spoon and you swirl it around. I hope everybody can see it. You kind of create a little, a little stream there. And then I take my chickpeas. Now you can either soak and boil them yourself, soak them overnight and then boil. And the canned ones work just as fine for this. And we're just gonna put it on top. And the fun thing to do with this, after I do a swirl of some oil, I'm going to clip some of my delicious herbs and you can just break them apart and put them on top. They've all been rinsed. And the fun with this is that the chickpeas, you can just mash them yourself as you're putting them on your bread. And it's uh, like a table side hummus, like you're doing, you're doing it yourself instead of the chickpeas already blended in the tahina, and you get the texture of the chickpeas. Uh, and it's a, an incredible breakfast to have with the chopped salad, which will come up next. And again, this is good for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. But instead of your usual cereals or whatever sweet buns you might be eating in the morning, uh, this is really very good. And the chickpeas uh, and all kinds of beans have tremendous fiber and uh, very uh, high in vitamin B. And uh, the tahina is another wonderful source of protein. Uh, funny, not so funny, is that when I went to buy tahina in the store, just as the coronavirus was starting to become so um, apparent in the community, the shelves in every store were bare uh, from tahina. They evidently, the secret is out, and it's a very good source of protein, and people are hoarding it but I was lucky enough to find some and you can also get it online. So that is a, a terrific breakfast. And now I will show you the chunky salad. Now, when you talk about your salads, 
I know we're not going to the markets as often, so you're not going to want to have a lot of lettuces that are going to wilt and you know get tired very quickly in your fridge. So we've been using a lot of cabbages, uh, cucumbers if you can get them, you uh, peppers if you can get them. We also um, have chard, which is rainbow chard can really last a long time in your fridge. But we've been doing a lot of salads. The um, cabbages are very, very um, available to us here in the Valley. Uh, you can put in the little tomatoes if they're available to you. But this with the masa baja, which I prepared with the tahina, um, is a wonderful breakfast with a nice pita or whatever type of cracker or bread you have. And then you don't need any fancy machine for carrots, but look at these gorgeous carrots I just got delivered from the market. And I don't need a Cuisinart, I just, these are, pe the outside peel is peeled. And now I'm just gonna take a regular peeler, I'm sure everybody has these at home. And I make these gorgeous swirls, thick swirls. And it makes the salad look very pretty. You're creating another layer of texture and flavor. And the only, you don't need a fancy vinaigrette. You don't have to have salads. You see these pretty curls here? Um, now I'm just going to take a lemon and you can use your hands, but I'm all about my lemon juicers. I love them. Whoop. And I'm just gonna take, lemons are abundant in the valley, whether from your friend's trees or the market, the farmer's market. You just squeeze a lot of lemon on top as much as you like. And again, you can use your hands just to squeeze your lemon, but I think this is fun. If you are gonna do it by hand, a great way to do it is you squeeze like this, you hold your hands here to catch the pits because nobody likes pits in their salad. Okay, if you do, now you can just have salt on there and no oil if you're trying to just have a non-fat diet, but a little olive oil is not gonna hurt anybody. You can also use pepper. And then I always have my handy squeeze a uh, bottle of olive oil. And that's what you have. So that's the second item. And this is good for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And again, these are, you can use root vegetables in here, beets we use sometimes. Sometimes I use leftover potatoes from dinner, roasted onions, roasted cauliflower, whatever I have um, in my fridge. And you can make a salad. So just, uh, Clean out your kitchen fridge and, and make a salad with whatever you have there. So that's number two. The next thing we're going to do is um, an asparagus tart. So I have to get my dough out. So you'll see in, the pa in my pantry list that you're going to get for whoever would like, um, it's good to have puff pastry dough. And we use the Pepperidge Farm pastry dough. Aria, can you take this, please? My friend Virginia Polster is on here, and she's the queen of puff pastry. She actually buys the sheets of it at Smart and Final. I buy the ones in the grocery store that are folded over. They last in your freezer forever. Um, if they're folded over, um, you're going to have seams that you're just going to want to pinch together. You can even do it with wet fingers. So I just want, want to move this bowl, please. And I just need my, I'm going to get my rolling pin and the flour just to flatten it out a little bit. So you're just going to put, so this doesn't stick to your rolling pin. You're just going to take a little fine flour, put it on top. And you're just going to roll this out a little bit to make it a little bigger. I haven't left myself a lot of room. But basically, you're just going to roll it out one way and the other, just to create a bit of a, a larger tart. And then, once you, um, I had done this a little bit ahead of time, um, you're going to just, uh, about an inch and a half from the edges, you're just going to make a line with your knife all around. And, there, and uh, don't worry about the measurements, just as long as you're scoring it from the edges, just a little bit. And then I just like poke little holes in this. So to save time, 
Um, I'm not going to pop it in the oven now, but some, sometimes what I do is I pop it um, on a tray in the oven at 400 and let it get a little brown and then put my ingredients on. But for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna show you this uh, assembly now. So in this bowl, I have, crack, I have cracked an egg, uh, a cup of ricotta cheese, and a cup of feta. Now again, if you don't have ricotta cheese, you can use cottage cheese. If you don't have feta, you can use goat cheese. If you don't have, you know, both of those cheeses use one kind of cheese. I chopped some garlic in there. And all I'm going to do is spread this on my tart. And it's gonna be inside the lines that I had prepared. So you're just spreading it on. And this literally takes me no time at all. It's a family favorite. And they, even after you make it, it freezes very well. So you can make the tart, bake it, and then just uh, freeze it and take it out as needed. But it's just nice. It's nice instead of pizza every night. It's just a lovely, healthy, tasty dish. So now, also, um, McClendon's Farm is providing us with incredible um, asparagus. I'm just going to line them up like soldiers right on the cheese mixture. You see how quick this is. The one thing I didn't show you is that there's no need to even cut these. All you do is snap off the tough bottom. They come right off, and it's about this size. And I'm just going to line them up. And then I just drizzle a little bit of the olive oil on top. And that's it. And you pop it in the oven at 400. Um, the Pepperidge Farm Puff Pastry Dough is wonderful with their directions on how to prepare it. And, uh, you know, that's all it takes. I'm going to show you a completed one. So this is family dinner tonight. I don't know if you can see. Can everybody see? I hope so. So that is the puff paste. Now to have, um, if you don't have asparagus, you can do tomatoes, you can do ratatouille. Any of your leftover vegetables can go right on top. Um, and, and any other type of cheeses as well, mozzarella, whatever you have. Um, but it's a very versatile dough, very easy to use. And it's also one of those great things to keep on hand in your freezer, you can also make sweet tarts as well. So that's our asparagus tart. Now we're gonna go to dessert. So for dessert, it couldn't be more simple. Again, we are inundated with um, citrus here in the valley and the trees are like groaning with, with uh, citrus. So all I do is these are gorgeous pink grapefruits. They're all over the neighborhood and McClendon's farm actually gave me some in my box yesterday. I just cut it in half. I take some brown sugar and I sprinkle it on top. You don't have to put the sugar on top, but it's nice if you want to have a little sweet dessert. And then you just put this under the broiler until the edges of your fruit start to brown. It's absolutely delicious. You don't even have to section the um, grapefruit because the broiling softens it and they, it scoops right out into the spoon. Uh, it, and then with that, it's always good to have on hand, very delicious, um, high uh, cocoa content chocolate around and any kind of nuts that you enjoy, almonds or pistachio. And that's a dessert with the fruit, with some nuts and chocolate. And uh, that is basically a meal. And you can have that for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, these are things you can have on hand in your cabinetry, your refrigerator and freezer. When I talk about pantry, we're talking about not just what's in our cupboards, but what is in our um, refrigerator and freezer as well. Uh, so with that, um, I just wanted to create a way to cook simpler and faster and um, it's much easier to do when you have the ingredients on hand. So for anybody that wants, I have a wonderful um, well-stocked pantry list for everybody, anybody that would enjoy it. And again, it's worth the investment to have those things, not just for the times of coronavirus, but 
all throughout the year. I know it's very, been very helpful for me throughout the years, and I hope it will be helpful for you. So with that, I'm open to questions if anybody has any. All right, um, just chiming in over here. If you do have a question, you should unmute your microphone um, as most of you have been muted by me. Uh, again, you're welcome to chime in. Alana did not share, but she also has a website that has many of her recipes and different ideas of food throughout the year. It's shortcuts to Shabbat.com. Uh, again, I, I can share that in an email. I'll put it in tomorrow's email that I'm sending out to everyone so you can see the link to it. And uh, if you're on Facebook, it's already on there and many of our things. So please don't hesitate to ask questions here. Uh, Arlene Meyer just asked a question through the chat, which was, what is the name of the local farm again? Okay, so the local farm that I've been talking about is McClendon's. And um, if you give us your email address, we'll be able to send you the site and uh, you're able to order from them from McClendonSelect.com. And you said they deliver? Um, no. So you have to go there right now. They're all over the valley. Uh, the, on the east and west side, this is considered east for them. Uh, and I've been doing my pickups uh, at the church at 7th Avenue, uh, just north of Bethany Home Road. There's a church there on the west side of the street. Uh, they are there from um, 8 until 11. And I just drive you order prior to that day on Wednesday. I mean, they have Saturdays. I, I only will go on Wednesday, and they so it's Wednesday and Saturdays, and they uh, put the, the box into your car for you. In addition, when you order, they'll show you they have box A, B, and C, different prices, and they'll show you what the contents of the box will be that week. I have a question. Um, the the asparagus tart looks delicious. Now, the one that was baked looked like it had an edge turned over. So, um, do you turn the edges over before you bake? Let me show you here. Okay. Uh, let me show you how to do it. When you take that knife and you score it, can you see? Um, just like an inch and a half from the edge, I go all the way around and score it. When you bake it, it pops up around like that. So you don't even have to bend or fold or anything. You just score around and it will create that, you know, nice crust around the tart. Thank you. Awesome. Anyone else have a question you want to chime in over here? Um, Pinky, I will say, I saw Pinky wrote and asked to spell the name of the farm. So I'll share that. Um, I'm going to screen share. How about that? So everyone can see it. I'll put it on the screen for a second. And then, of course, I can share this afterwards. But um, here is the screen share so you can see. If anyone has a question, just uh, chime in in a moment. But if everyone sees that, McClendon Farmers Market, McClendonSelect.com. Right. Um, so it's McClendon's plural, select.com. Uh, but again, and you, uh, you should go online. Um, as soon as possible, because whenever they send out that email, they send it out a couple of days before that uh, particular market. Uh, it, they do say they sell out quickly. So the minute I get my email, I order so that I can definitely get a box. And it saves me a lot of, you know, hassle and worry about going to the store. Well, what was the name of the tahini okay. and where did you buy it? Okay, so this is um, Tarazi, T-A-R-A-Z-I. Um, um, there, you can actually go on uh, tarazifoods.com. Okay. And if you don't want to go to the market, there is a, a market called Baiz, B like in boy, A-I-Z. It's on 27th Avenue and Northern, and there's another one, 20th Street south of Roosevelt. It's a Middle Eastern market. They sell it, and they sell it in very, very large containers. Uh, I always have a ton on hand in our house. Uh, and uh, the Persian market on Scottsdale Road next to the Persian Room restaurant, they also have a lovely market. Okay, thank That's you very much. Um, on that note of the tahina, I have a question also in the chat, and the question was, what did you add to it? Okay, so um, I added, and 
every uh, most tahina um, jars will give you uh, what to do with it, but um, ordinarily you can do equal parts tahina. You don't even have to measure equal parts tahina and water, and um, the juice of a lemon, and your salt according to taste. I usually do like a teaspoon of salt, and optional to to use the garlic. Uh, and, uh, but if I, you want it a little thicker to, ha uh, then you would put three quarters of a cup of water to the, um, one cup of tahina. And, uh, my husband likes me to do it looser for a dressing. So you can always add more water and lemon juice to make it, um, an incredible dressing, an ice creamy dressing. And it's non-dairy, which is terrific. And again, with tons of protein. And just to add, I, I saw they sell it on their website. If you want to get uh, on Amazon, it's double the price of the standard retail price. So just putting that out there. Okay. There's another wonderful tahina, but it's a little expensive called Sum. Is it S O O M? They are two sisters in Los Angeles that um, they actually produce the tahina in Israel, but they sell it in America. And they, uh, oh yeah, they also have it at Trader Joe's and also Whole Foods has their own brand of Tlina. I happen to really like this one the best. That's why I use it. But there, there's tons of, yeah, Trader Joe's has their own brand too. And Sum is available on Amazon too, for those who are right. shopping just digitally. Right, right. And they are, uh, these two sisters are, you know, incredible entrepreneurs. And uh, I just heard them interviewed recently. You know, people were asking them how their business was doing in light of the uh, coronavirus. And uh, so people are really looking to support small businesses. And they are two nice Jewish girls from LA with a very good business. Okay, Alana, next question through chat. What, and I'm sure you'll have some options and, and other people can chime in on this. What brands of puff pastries are kosher? Uh, the only one I know about is the Pepperidge Farm. I did have a box that I can open. So I'll, I'll chime in. I know that the Pepperidge Farm ones, you can buy in Safeway. Right. Um, um, and as I said before, they have them at um, the, the large boxes of it at um, Smart and Final, where they're already laid out in a, a sheet where they don't have the seams. Because when you buy it in um, Safeway, it's folded over twice. It's like three columns and you kind of have to mush the, the seams together so you don't have any leakage at the bottom of the tart. So um, if you're really going to use a lot of puff pastry, I recommend going to Smart and Final and they have the sheets already laid out for you. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? Um, don't be shy, please. If you are shy, you can definitely, um, you can definitely message me privately. Virginie just added that there is another, is the, Virginie, were you answering what is the brand in Smart and Final? You're muted. Hold on. The puff pastry queen. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say yes. It's the puff pastry. It's French puff pastry called Jackie's Best Ink. It's a KSA Hexter, though. I know not everybody uses that, and it's Parv. But that's in Smart and Final. Smart and Final. Awesome. We use that. Just putting that out there. Yeah, that we buy that. Well, good. You could get that for me next time, lady. Thank you. They have that in Restaurant Depot. Just oh. putting it out there. If anyone shops for restaurants on here. Uh, oh. Um, I just joined and I was told that yeast is very difficult to find. It is. Wait, Alana, did one of your recipes have yeast? Yeah. The salad does and it's very hard to find. Uh, I'll tell you, we bought it on Amazon. They have it in stock. Right. I happen to have a good stock of it myself because that's the well-stocked pantry. That's something I do keep in my, my pantry. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank My you. pleasure. If anyone needs yeast, happy to start searching and finding. Any um, other questions on these recipes or something that you wanted to address to have Alana address that might not be something that she presented today? Don't be shy. <laughs> or Morty, we have Morty from Montreal. Maybe he wants to share a joke. But before the joke, Morty. Um, again, I really do encourage you to check out Alana's blog, Shortcuts to Shabbat. 
Um, there are always some great recipes on there. I'm going to actually pull up the website so you can see. Um, always, I, I always like the pictures more than the recipes. That's my uh, personal. Right. You can find it on Instagram and Facebook because I'm constantly posting uh, new recipes and ideas and a lot of shortcuts for people. So if anyone wants to see it, I mean, here are shortcuts to ramen, always a recipe, happy hour, rosemary, garlic, truffle nuts. Mm -hmm. I have no clue how to pronounce this date cookie. Um, but again, they all come with pictures. Menina. With, thank you. Uh, a brisket rub. All of these are healthy and delicious. Well, the brisket, that's a matter of opinion, but. If it was delicious or? No, it's delicious. It's not the healthiest thing you can eat. But everybody's entitled to a treat here and there. I hear you. <laughs> Red meat, I got you. But if anyone has any questions in general. Um, yeah, I'm happy to answer anybody. Anybody can email me at ilana.storch at gmail.com. And uh, maybe you'll provide the. Uh, the uh, recipe. Yeah, I'm going to put, you know what, again, if you don't have my email address, reply to today's email that had the link to this. Um, I'm going to put it in the chat again. I'm happy to share that recipe. I already shared it with somebody during the uh, presentation that asked me for it. And uh, someone chimed in that in addition to the food recipes and ingredients that you'll find on her blog, there's some great stories as well of what inspired Alana to do it or where what it was uh, joined with and the inspirations. So feel free to check out that website and uh, get inspired as well. And I know Alana would appreciate if you did copy a recipe of hers, send her a picture or tell her how it tasted. I, 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 always... love, that. I do love when people chime in and feel free to ask me questions anytime. I'm happy to share. Thank you uh, so much for this. We all appreciate it. We're going to have to, I already know that I like the, uh, the asparagus. I, I think I've tried that. I know I've tried that. Those are delicious. I don't know about healthy, but that's your favorite. Yes. yes. So again, thank you all for joining. Thank you, Alana. I know.